Hello, everybody. So we're going to talk about using Docker for managing masters. So first, I'm going to present myself. I'm Christoph Mueller. I work for Yplay, a software manufacturer of uh, set-top box operating systems. And I want to thank them for being here at the Jenkins conference today. Uh, we have uh, mostly a software company, and we're mostly doing cross-compilation with lots of components about 150 components and lots of different hardwares and flavors. Uh, then what is Docker? Docker in one slide. Uh, Docker is first a company. It's also a technology allowing you to uh, deploy application package, uh, packaged in uh, uh, hermetically sealed containers uh, where you have everything concerning the application, not only the executable, but the init files, the log files, etc. This provides portability and most of it isolation. So how to use Docker with Jenkins? You have two possibilities. First, you can use Docker on slaves. That's what I call Docker in Jenkins. <coughs> Sorry. So you probably heard about that at the keynote and maybe also yesterday afternoon at Kosuke Talk. Uh, when I wrote these slides, there was only one Docker plugin. Now there are six more. So you can do many things with, uh, with Docker on the slaves, and this is very interesting. The isolation, you can have all your stack on your slave to do your builds and tests and so on. The other way is to use Jenkins in Docker and to use Docker to deploy Jenkins. Instead, instead of installing Java, deploying the jar file, writing your init scripts and configuring some things, you just do basically Docker pull Jenkins. You take the official image from Cloud B, and then you can just run it, and you have a Jenkins running that you can configure by click. So I use this technology not only to deploy one master, but to deploy several masters. Now you must ask me why you want to do that. Why do you want to have several masters? Uh, I was happily surprised yesterday morning because uh, Andrew Bayer in the Seven Habits talk said that it was good to have several masters. So I feel uh, comforted by that. But first, I have to describe the situation we have at Yplay. Uh, we had one big master that has grown a lot with many jobs, many slaves. Each slave is a big PC with a lot of RAM and so on. And the problem was that every, almost everybody was admin and installing lots of plugins with different versions. It would have been okay without issues, but there were many issues with that. Performance issue is not a, such a big problem. It's normal if your master is growing, it's linear with the number of jobs and everything, uh, the startup mostly. Big problem was reliability because people were installing on the edge versions. It was not working, it was incompatible. Sometimes we had a two days downtime and it was not possible for the project. So the big, big problem then happened is that projects started to create their own masters. And we had two more, so we had three different masters. The project master starting to have reliability problems too. And so they came back to me, the tools department, and say, it's not working. What is not working? Oh, this new thing that we did ourselves. Uh, we also had a security audit. And it was uh, quite bad because the big master was HTTP, so they could get a password easily. Then they were admin that they had the console. Then they could read the SSH key. They have no passphrase. They could log as root on all the servers. Basically, we had to start from scratch. So that's wh why we use Docker to have several different masters. So now I'm going to explain how to do that. As we have seen, it's very simple. You just have to Docker run with the Jenkins image and specify the port binding. But the thing is that all the data of Jenkins is going to be in a directory var Jenkins home. And you have three possibilities on where to put this data. Either you just run this, and the data will be inside the container. But only the application can access the data. The, counter, the container is hermetically sealed. What's better is that you can sort of mount a directory, a host directory, where Docker is running, inside the container. So you, you provide some kind of pass, a binding, like you do with the ports. And it's a little bit better. What I did is a third solution is to have two containers. One is a data container. Instead of running the Jenkins image, you can see we're running the BuzzyBox image, which is much smaller than uh, Ubuntu, on which the Jenkins image is built. Ubuntu is about 200 megabytes. BuzzyBox is about a couple of megabytes. So it's an almost empty container that's going to contain all the data from Jenkins. 
and it's going to grow. And then you bind them together with dash dash volumes from the name of the data conda. So to summarize, you pull the image, you create the data container, BuzzyBox, you create the service, uh, official Jenkins image, and you bind them together. And you have something, ah, uh, yes. And I have uh, seven different masters and seven data containers. So I also created a dispatcher using uh, Apache as a reverse proxy. Uh, each master has name, and so they're routed to vhost and to the right ports of the right Jenkins. Uh, I should, what I did wrong is that I installed Apache on the host, like where Docker is running. It should have been a container also. Then I could switch from Apache to Jinx, for example, uh, or another dispatcher, but maybe in the future. So we have a system like this. You have users accessing the dispatcher. Here it's HTTPS, so the dispatcher is handling all the security, and after you have HTTP, dispatcher is going to the right vhost and the right service. And you also have the data containers, and you have the ports going to the slaves for slave connection. Now, uh, you have these two containers, data and service, and you can have a third one that I'm going to create dynamically. I mean, I'm by hand, I'm going to create a new one on the Ubuntu image running the bash application, so I have a shell. And this new one is accessing the data, like the Jenkins is accessing the same data container. Then I can pull data to make a backup, for example. I can push data to install a plugin and restart the, the master. I can modify data. And when I exit, as I have put dash dash rm, the container is destroyed. It's just useful for uh, working. Another admin uh, possibility, if you want to restart your container, you can just docker stop, docker start it. If you want to destroy it, for example, not because of a new version of Jenkins, because that can do, you can do that by click, but uh, inside the image, I have put some certificate, uh, SSL for OpenLDAP, and they expired, so I have to build a new image. So I just keep the data container, destroy the service, and then build a new image and run it again, and it works. It's quite easy to do. Um, another interesting thing is that you can have three levels of backup. At the Jenkins level, you can have plugins doing backups. Sometimes they have problems. Uh, also, I can extract what I want with the technique of the Ubuntu. I can extract some data and, uh, for example, only save the XML files, not taking the builds or the artifacts. And then I can backup the whole VM where everything is working. You can also have three levels of monitoring, the VMware level, Docker level, containers, or uh, Jenkins plugin monitoring. And we're also using world strategy plugin uh, everywhere. Now, uh, where are we going? What I, we could do better is instead of launching seven containers for data, seven for services, we can just write all the bindings all the names in a text file and use an orchestration level like Docker Compose to just say Docker up and then everything is, is up. Uh, also, we have a lot of Ansible scripts. I don't know if you're familiar to define uh, how we install uh, services. Now we have to separate between the Docker files and the Ansible part. And the last slide is uh, we don't have the monitoring level, Docker level yet. And something I don't like is that when I create a new master, it takes two or three hours. It takes only 10 seconds to launch a container, but then I have to click and configure all our standards for text and everything, uh, all the networks, IRC, LDAP, everything, and it takes a long time. So I wish there was some uh, programmatical way of doing that. Uh, Kosuke yesterday presented Tiger, and it seems that it was much faster. So there must be a way. Thank you. Uh.